Pippin Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Hello students and welcome to the class of secretarial practice. We are now starting the third session of the secretarial correspondence with banks. And in this session, we'll be talking about the new concepts in the banking sector, the emerging of new concepts in the banking sector. The new concepts which has been emerged and how it is helping the society as a whole, how it is helping the people as a whole. So we'll be talking here in this chapter about the e-banking and the different concepts which are emerge along with the e-banking in order to help the society, help the people to be comfortable with the banking sector. Along with that, what precautions secretary will have to take while drafting with the banks and the circumstances in which secretary will have to write letters to the bankers. New concepts of the banking. Of late, if you try to see, lots of changes has taken place in the banking sector. The first change, the major change, which has actually shown the advancement in the banking sector is e-banking. Many, many people should not understand earlier initially when this e-banking concept was introduced and many people used to get confused with that. E-banking in the simple words, electronic banking, which has taken a giant step in the banking sector, a huge step in the banking sector. The banking sector has developed on a very big way because of the e-banking. The e-banking has actually taken the economy to the greater heights. Bank, the e-banking has actually helped the advancement of the technology. The virtual banking is possible today because of e-banking, which means the customer, without approaching the bank, without uh, going to the door of the bank, can do the banking activities with the help of the technology which is available, and that is called as e-banking. That is called as a electronic banking. So, what are the things that has happened because of e-banking? What are the changes that has happened? What are the changes that we are experiencing today because of the e-banking? Because of the electronic banking? Those people who know about the banking sector, few, I mean the few decades back. And if we try to compare the banking uh, activities those days and the banking activities today, there is a big, huge difference in that. So what things has happened because of e-banking? If you try to say, what are the advantages of the e-banking? The good things that has happened because of e-banking is any time banking. Today, if you try to see, those days, those days, there should be timing for the banking. I mean, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. After that, no banking or before 10 a.m., no banking. It was only during this particular time you can do your banking transactions. But now, anytime banking, you can do banking activities 24-7. Night, midnight, suddenly you remember you have to uh, make some payment. Midnight, suddenly you can get up from the sleep and with the help of your phone, you can do your transactions. This is possible today. Payments to be made to someone, receiving of the payments, paying of the bills, electricity bills, phone bills, anything possible, anytime, you know, anywhere, these things are possible. This has happened because of e-banking. Low-cost banking transactions. Nowadays, because of the e-banking, the transactions which place does not charge as money. Say for example, a simple example, DD, demand drafts say for example. When the demand drafts were issued, that time some charges were there for transferring of the money from one account of the branch to the another account of the bank, depending upon the amount of money and the place where are transferring the money. Now with NEFT and RTGs with 2 rupees you can transfer lakhs of rupees from one place to another place. This is possible because of the e-banking. The cost of banking transactions has been reduced because of electronic banking. User friendly, those people who are used to the technology, means used to the, 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 the latest type of the technology or used to any simple technology for that purpose, you can very easily handle this online banking or e-banking that we talk about. Complete transparency. 
it is, there is a complete transparency in the e-banking. You get to know about your accounts, you get to know about your balance, you get to know about, you know, you get the messages from time to time about your account balance, about your every transaction that has happened. You can keep a follow-up of it and you know what exactly is happening at the end of the day. How many transactions you have done in the whole day? What is the balance of your account? What is the status of your account by sitting at home? We did not go to the bank to check all these things. Just by sitting at home, you can get the full data of your account, full information of your account. Quality banking, you also get a quality banking by sitting at home from anywhere, any place in the world. Quality banking, you get the best of the services if there is a, you know, a proper technology if you are using. Speed banking, speed banking, quickly. You know, those days if you want to transfer your money from, even with the DD, from one state to another, it is to take 15 days. No, they used to say, no, it have, in Bombay, no, it has to go in courier and then it will be credited 15 days. But now, within few minutes, your money gets transferred from one account to another account. Portable banking that is practiced from anywhere, any part of the world. If your bank is in Panjim, you can operate your account from Canada. You can operate your account from England. You can operate it from anywhere. Anywhere your account can be operated. You don't have to go and stand on the doors of the bank. You don't have to go to the branch of the bank to operate your account. From anywhere you can operate your account. This is the, this is the advantage, is good points of the e-banking. Now different concepts which have been introduced in e-banking. Different concepts has been introduced. So new things which has come into the e-banking. Few things out of that we will discuss. Real time time gross settlement, RTGS, something that is called as a RTGS. RTGS is a transferring, a system of transferring the money from one branch of the bank or from one bank to another bank electronically, online and that is called as RTGS, that is a real time gross settlement. There are a few things which has to be kept in mind about the RTGS, the minimum balance of amount which can be transferred here is 2 lakhs maximum there is no limit minimum 2 lakhs you require to transfer the money in rtgs very small amount of charges are been charged there is no uh, service timings like from from uh, 10 to 5 nothing of the any time you can do this there is nothing, no restrictions there. So this is called as a RTGS, where the minimum amount that you can transfer is one lakh, no limit for a maximum. Service timings are also not there, no charges there. You know, this is called as RTGS. Next important thing, this is a form which has been used for transferring the money through RTGS. Then comes the NIFT or National Electronic Funds Transfer. Very similar to RTGS. The difference here is you can start with minimum 1 rupee up to 2 lakhs of rupees. You cannot have transferring of money above 2 lakhs. Above 2 lakhs you have to go to RTGS. For NEFT, that is a National Electronic Fund transfer from 1 rupee to 2 lakhs you can transfer from NEFT. Again the charges are negligible, no timings, 24-7 you can do it. This is possible in the NEFT. Again the forms are available, you have to fill in the forms, attach your check or whatever you are using to transfer the money, produce it to the banker, banks takes the responsibility of transferring the money within no time, real time that we talk about. Next talks about a National Payment Corporation of India, NPCI that we talk about, NPCI, this is called as a NPCI. NPCI is an organization for all retail Retail payments in, in India. It is a umbrella organization for all the retail payments in India. Banks are not important here. Any of your bank account is linked with one umbrella and from there you can make the payment. Like for example, you know, there are, there are online transfers or say for example, you know, there are some apps through which you can make the payment. Any bank for that purpose, you can link your any bank account with this umbrella for this particular app and you can make the payment. That is called as a uh, umbrella organization for making any retail payments in India. This has been formed, this has been formed by the Reserve Bank of India with the help of the Indian Bank Association, IB, 
uh, a that has been called as Indian Bank Association. Means all the banks have come together and they have started this umbrella. You know, under which you can make any of that. There are so many banks, uh, so many apps through which you can make the payments. You can receive the payments. So this has been allowed, and this is called as a NPCI. That is a National Cor uh, National Payment Corporation of India. So many apps are there to make the payments. Okay. So these apps are been linked together. All the banks are linked together under one umbrella and through which you can make the payment. You need not be for one bank, there is not only one app. All these banks, 100 banks which are there, with these banks, these apps are linked with that and you can make and receive the payment. So that's called as a NPCI. Okay, so the next facility provided by the electronic banking is Unified Payment Interface, that is UPI. You must have seen when you are using Google Pay, you must have seen there is something called as UPI, which is an ID for connecting your account with your bank. And this is what is called as a unified payment interface. So this is a system where multiple bank accounts of the, account, of the customer is been Joined together with the mobile application, merging several banking features. This is called as UPI. Google Pay, say for example, a simple example of a Google Pay. In Google Pay, whenever you are making any transaction through Google Pay app, you must have seen the word UPI. You know, it is the ID. UPI is the ID which is linking your account with a bank. And that is called as UPI, that is a Unified Payment Interface. This is another way of making payments, receiving payments through this particular app. And this is another thing where the payments and the uh, transactions could be settled online. Online without the personal touch between the buyer and the seller, without the personal touch between the the person who is making the payments and the person who is receiving the payment. This is called as UPI. Next comes is IMPS, that is Immediate Pay Services. IMPS is also very similar to the NEFT and the RTGS. NEFT and the RTGS, where I told you that in case of the uh, RTGS, there is a minimum amount of money that you can transfer is 2 lakhs. In NEFT, you can transfer the minimum amount of rupees is 1 rupee. Even in the IMPS, I, I, IMPS which is also the electronic transfer of money from, from one person to another person or from one bank to another person, very similar to that, where again the minimum amount of transferring the money is 1 rupee. 1 rupee in case of the IMPS. And the maximum limit is here, that is 2 lakhs. You cannot have more than 2 lakhs in case of the IMPS. So here this is also the electronic transfer of money from one person to another person or from one branch to another branch and that is called as it can happen through the ATM transferring of the money because when you go to the ATM that is a provision for transferring of the money even in your mobile also if you are using even the Google Pay. You can transfer the money from one account to another account. So this is called as a IMPS which could be used again to a transferring of the money by using the app. So that is called as a IMPS. The next thing which is there is 99 hash. Another thing which has been used for making of the payment, another app which has been used for transferring of the money which is called as a 99 hash. So this is another type of the app to reach to every common man across the country. This banking service has been launched. Banking customer can avail the services by dialing 99 hash, a common number across all telecom services. This is similar to the Google Pay or any other payment uh, devices where you are transferring the money by using 99 hash also you can transfer the money from one person to another person from one account to another account okay so this is again launch in order to provide this facilities to the common people 
in order to provide the facilities of transferring the money to the common people by using the internet banking or the e-banking, that is electronic banking, that's called as a 99 hash. So the next, next facility provided by the electronic banking is the merchant banking. Merchant banking means the facility provided to the customers as an additional services in order to perform many of the functions which they cannot do it on their own and they are charged some amount of commission, they are charged some amount of charges for doing these specialized services. It can be underwriting of the shares, it can be uh, raising of the funds, it can be registration of the companies. You know, there are many services, specialized services, which are been provided by these merchant bankers to the companies and to the customers for which they are being charged certain amount of commission or certain amount of charges. This is called as a merchant banking. So what are the services basically provided by this particular uh, merchant banking? Servicing and sponsoring of the issues. When company issues the shares, and these shares has to be sold in the market or the demand has to be created for these shares. It is the merchant bankers who take the responsibility of sponsoring these issues. Helps in mergers and the acquisition, mergers of the companies. There should be some agent, somebody as a liquidator who should take the responsibility of doing all the formalities of merging of the companies. Or maybe an agent is required for merging of the companies, bringing the two companies and making it as a one single company. So doing those formalities, doing all the documentation is the responsibility of these merchant bankers. Arranging fixed deposits, many times companies require some deposits, public deposits we are talking about. Because on the basis of the public deposits, sometimes the fixed deposits helps to buy the fixed assets. Now arranging for these fixed deposits for the companies, for the customers, it is a responsibility of the merchant bankers for which they will charge commission. Next comes is in the helps in the portfolio management, portfolio management related to the underwriting. They act as underwriters, act as an agent for selling the shares of the company and they charge the underwriting commission for this. You know, there are many things which are related to the companies for the development of the companies, for the growth of the companies, for the registration of the companies which has been done by the, which is done by the merchant bankers. So this is another electronic banking facility provided by the, by the bankers. Next comes is the internet banking. You know, we, uh, the internet plays a very important role nowadays everywhere and also in the banking sector. This is something called as a online banking, where the banking transaction takes place online. It might be, it might be applying to the loans, it might be opening of the accounts, it might be you know processing of the uh, loan forms or any of the in, uh, uh, banking transactions. Any of the banking activities is been carried out online without the personal contact between the customers. Online transactions have been possible. Online banking activities are possible. No need of the bankers and the customers sitting together or coming in the personal contact in order to do any of the transactions which is called as a internet banking. The advantages of this internet banking is it reduces the cost of transactions. I have said it earlier that when there is no personal contact between the banker and the customer, customer does not have to go to the, to the branch of the bank and from the home, from wherever they are, they can do the transaction. The cost of the transaction is always reduced. 24 hour banking transactions. It is like 24 7 banking transaction. There are no holidays when it comes to the online transactions. There are no breaks in the working hours when it comes to the online transaction. So anytime, anywhere you can do the banking transaction. It increases the customer locality and con uh, quality and confidence. Which means confidence of the customers is increased because customer can do transactions anytime. You don't have to wait and take the time out to go to do any of the transactions. 
whenever you are free when the time is available you can do the banking transactions and that's why the confidence among the customers has been increased the precious time can be used for the other work other better work than going and standing in the queues and trying to do the banking transactions so here the confidence has been developed easy procedure for applications at the same time applying online maybe for the bank balance maybe for opening the account maybe for uh, you know any 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 other uh, transactions you can do it online where no you can just log in to the website of the banks and any of the procedure could be done online without writing something on the paper in the black and white or without going and standing in the queue outside the banks or without doing any of the personal documentations this is possible and that's why it has been accepted by the customers all over the universe next thing comes is a uh, mobile banking everybody has the mobile everybody uses the mobile with the help of the mobile banking activities could be done and it has been very much accepted by the people all over the world banking transactions are possible with the help of the mobile phones and this is called as a mobile banking banking business is possible with mobile phone you don't have to use any other device with the mobile wherever you are in whatever condition you are in whatever situation you are you can do your transactions mobile phone users can have access to the bank information at the same time you can also have an access to the bank information all the information about the bankers bank and other deposits everything you can get it through the mobile phones emergencies of mobile banking is a huge success nowadays if you try to see people with the help of the mobile phones any transaction any type of the banking activity is possible and that's why it is a huge huge success in the banking sector paying for travel tickets is growing at a great speed no making any of the spot transaction maybe paying of the travel tickets making payments uh, of online purchases or making make maybe making payments of the bills electricity bills phone bills all this is possible with the help of the mobile today you don't have to go and stand in any of the queues in any of the departments to make any of the payments which has become very easy and simple by uh, sitting standing anywhere wherever you are and you can settle your transaction so it has become more and more simpler and easy to every human being next comes is the precautions to be taken by the company secretary while corresponding with banks we have spoken all this time about the banks different types of the bank accounts and all that what a secretary has to do now we are talking we have come back to the company secretary when we are talking about a company secretary company secretary is a person who is qualified as a company secretary who has passed an examination conducted by the institute of the company secretaries of india who is a member of the institute of the company secretaries of india who has a qualifications who has a knowledge about the accountancy who has a knowledge about the law who has a knowledge about the economics who has a knowledge about the commerce and who is known as a public relation officer a secretary while corresponding with the bankers has to take certain precautions because secretary is an administrative officer of the company secretary is a pro of the company secretary on behalf of the company make correspondence with the banks and that's why you know that's why due care should be taken precautions should be taken while making any correspondence with the any correspondence with the banker so what are the points that should be kept in mind what are the precautions should be taken by the secretary while making correspondence with the bankers the first thing while writing any of the letter any of the letter to the banker there should be clarity it speaks about the clarity it should be clear and simple simple language should be used there should not be any ambiguous words or the confusion confusing words should be used in the letter when secretary is writing any letter 
to the banker to the bank simple language clear language the language which is easy to understand should be written no ambiguity no jargon should be used no confusing word should be used in the letter there should be clarity in the letter clarity should be very very clear easy to understand that should be kept in mind by the secretary second thing is a correct and complete second is correct and complete whatever information you are giving in the letter whatever information that you are giving through the correspondence it should be correct correct data complete data correct figures complete figures you know that is very important because that will speak about your personality how much you are serious about this particular correspondence and that's why clear and correct and complete information whether the data or the figures it should be correct and complete should be given because on the basis of that banker will able to take the decision if you are not giving the correct data if you are not giving the correct figures then the bankers will also have a confusion whether to if you are asking for a loan whether to sanction your loan or not to sanction your loan that's why it is very essential that you stick to the correct and the complete information confidential it is very important that uh secretary should be very confidential if say for example some information of the company should not be leaked out to anybody secretary should always take precautions not to leak out the secret matters secret data of the company even though you are writing a letter to the banker see that you maintain secrecy about the company you try to be confidential about your organization in which you are working that care should be taken the due care must be taken that is very very important it should be confidential courtesy very important that while you are writing the letter the language that you are using courteous language should be used the tone that you are using in writing the letter courteous tone should be used because that will create a impression of the company on the banker a good impression has to be created if you are using harsh words if you are using some some not a good language then that can have a bad impact on the company bad effect of the company so because of that courtesy should be seen in the letter writing checking for errors <clears throat> when the secretary is writing letters if there are any errors it should be checked it should be verified it should be double checked you cannot write the letters you cannot send the letters with the errors because that will create a bad impression on the company and also on the secretary so secretary has to be very careful while writing the letters while sending the letters or while checking the errors see that you check the errors and finally correction of the errors and if you know that there are errors in the letter see that you correct the errors before you deliver the letter before you send the letters if you are sending the letter with the errors which are already there errors which are already existing then that can create a bad impact on the reputation of the company that can create a bad impact on the reputation of the company and because of that due care must be taken precautions should be taken by the secretary while writing letters to the bankers because you have to create your impression you have to create your goodwill you have to create your reputation when you are corresponding with the banker so next thing which comes in the banking sector is a letter of credit letter of credit is always used in the international trade foreign trade where buyer is from a home country and seller is from the foreign country and the transaction takes place between the buyer and seller letter of credit is a letter issued by the banker from the home country to the party from the foreign country guaranteeing about the credit worthiness of the buyer guaranteeing the foreign trader that after producing the documents this particular party will be pay, making the payment and the bank takes the guarantee of making the payment this letter is called as a letter of credit or letter of guarantee or letter giving the credit worthiness of the buyer from the home country because this is very very important unless and until the party from the foreign country who is selling the goods to the customer in the home country 
is confident about the party he will never sell the goods to the to the person in the home country he will never deliver the goods to the person in the home country and because of that somebody has to give the guarantee and it's a bank which gives the guarantee about the buyer to the person to the seller in the foreign country by issuing a letter of credit under the under the letter head of the company and that is called as a letter of credit which is again very important in the international trade without issuing the letter of credit the international transactions may not happen may not take place and because of that letter of credit has to be issued by the banker now which are the parties which are involved in the letter of credit the first is the importer or the opener importer means the person who is a buyer or who is importing the goods from the foreign country and in whose favor letter of credit is issued as so for example there is a buyer from panji who is buying goods from uh, say for example australia now this importer or opener means that particular party from panjim who is buying the goods who is a buyer and in whose favor the letter is issued by one bank maybe state bank of india from panjim giving the guarantee of the credit worthiness of this person from panjim so this importer this buyer is called as a importer or a opener importers bank now the sbi state bank of india from panjim who issues this letter of credit in favor of this buyer from panjim is called as a importers bank this bank issues this letter of credit saying that this particular person from panjim is a trader buying goods from so and so countries for so many years and he has a good cre good credit in the society and he will always be ready to make the payments once the goods are been delivered to his place a letter has to be given signed by the banker giving the guarantee of this particular person and that is called as a importers bank exporter or a beneficiary exporter means the party from australia who will be selling the goods to this person who is a seller who will be supplying the goods who wants the guarantee of this particular person and who, who will be receiving this letter of credit that is called as a exporter or a beneficiary and finally the exporters bank or the negotiating banks means the bank in the foreign country a negotiating bank in the foreign country who is also in between these parties to accept this letter of credit through which this transaction will be completed this payment will be made through this particular bank and that is called as a negotiating bank a bank in the foreign country exporters bank in the foreign country that is called as a negotiating bank which will be accepting the payment from this particular party in order to complete the transaction so there are four parties in the letter of credit that is a importer who is called as a opener second one is a importer's bank in the home country third is a exporter from the foreign country who will be selling the goods and fourth is a bank in the foreign country who will be accepting the payments so these are four parties involved in this international trade and in using the letter of credit which is again very important in the international trade and in the banking sector next comes the final thing which comes is the drafting of the letters this particular lesson there is a practical work to be done and that is the letters letters to be drafted by the secretary to the banks different types of the letters has to be drafted to the secretary by the banks now for drafting the letters what is the format to be followed for drafting the letters in different circumstances letters will be drafted but to draft the letters the basic basic format which has to be followed is first in this letter there should be heading of the company secretary is writing the letters to the bank and it has to be always written on the letter head of the company where on top there will be letter head name of the company with the address of the company with the registration number of the company email of the company website of the company and the logo of the company which will be come at the center of this particular letter 
center of the letter where the name everything details of the company will appear here along with the registration number then after that comes the date date on which you are drafting the letter the date has to be written then comes the reference number the reference of this letter to what reference you have writing this letter that has to be written then the inside address inside address means the to address to whom you are writing if say for example if you are writing this letter to the branch manager state bank of india panjim then this will be that to address which is very very important because this letter you are sending to someone so this inside address comes then comes the subject of the letter subject means in brief you are writing about the body of the letter the subject of the letter what you will be writing in this particular letter what will be the total matter you will be writing in this letter in brief in one line you are writing this subject say for example you are applying for the loan then later on you will be writing in detail but here you are writing application for the loan so at a first instance bank manager comes to know okay this is about the loan the proposal is about the loan so that is a the subject then comes the salutation respected sir dear sir it is a salutation greeting somebody before writing the letter respecting someone before writing the letter basically you are creating an environment before writing the letter okay so that is a the salutation then comes the body of the letter the main part of the letter in the body of the letter there are three sub parts first is the introduction where you introduce about what you want to write introduction of the letter second body part body of the letter second part of it you are actually writing about the loan why you want the loan no uh, what you are going to do with the loan actual part of this particular proposal and the end will be the concluding part concluding part of this particular letter body of the letter so it always divided into the three parts then comes the complimentary close it is about the closing the letter you know the maybe in form of uh, yours faithfully yours sincerely so you are concluding the letter then comes the signature of the secretary who is writing this letter signature is required now since the emails are system has come signatures are not written because it is going through the registered email of the company so by the signature if it is a hard copy is going the signature of the person who is supposed to sign this particular letter authorized signatory of the company stamp of the company and if there are any enclosures some type of the letters you require the enclosures if you are opening an account with the bank then the resolution of opening an account of the board is required so you will going to enclose it so you have to write it here enclose resolution of the board to open the account if you are and something else you are enclosing you have to write it there and enclose it to this particular application so this is the format basically you are following to write the letters now what are the different circumstances for which secretary write letters to the bankers why in what circumstances secretary will write letters there are different circumstances where secretary will have to write letters to the banker first thing secretary will write the letter to the banker to open the bank account when a company is started a new company has been formed and you want to open an account in a particular bank you have to write a letter with the resolution of the board that we want to open a current account in your bank this will be the one circumstance where a secretary may write letter to the bank so that is the one circumstance second to act as a banker for the issue of shares secretary may also write the letter to act as a banker for the issue of the shares when the company decides to issue the shares to accept the application money to accept the uh, i mean the call money for everything or accept the applications you required one bank a counter of the bank so in that case secretary will write a letter to the banker saying that we have decided or we have resolved to issue the shares to the public so please kind please be kind enough to act as a banker to our issue so to accept all the applications accept the money you be there you take the charge of it so that is another circumstance where 
the letter will be written to the banker by the secretary. Third is to underwrite the issue of shares. Sometimes when the company is not that popular to sell its own shares, it gives the responsibility to the banker. You also take care, you take the responsibility of selling our shares to the public because banks have many customers. Banks can easily sell their shares by contacting the customers. So that's why bank has been appointed as an underwriter, as an agent to sell the shares of the company where bank will be charging commission to them which is called as an underwriting commission. So in this case, secretary may write letter to the, uh, to the uh, banker. Next is to stop payment of the check. Say for example, you have issued the check. And say for example, you have realized that you have issued it to the wrong person or the wrong amount is written. Or say for example, you have misplaced the check and you are worried that this check might go for the uh, payment. So in that case, you may write a letter to the banker saying that immediately have a stop payment to this check number so and so. Letter has to be written by the secretary for the stop payment of the check. To issue the balance certificate, many times company wants the balance certificate. Balance certificate in the sense, how much of amount of money is there in the credit balance of our account? Sometime monthly, every month, on the 30th or the 31st of every month, bank asks for the balance certificate, which means how much of money is left, how much of money is in the credit of our account. So to have a record of it, company secretary will write a letter to the banker and banker officially will reply to it. Next comes is to provide the overdraft facility. I told you that every business businessman or a company have their current account. And in order to have an overdraft facility, I told you that overdraft facility means overdrawing the account, withdrawing more than the credit balance of the account. So here again you will have to write the letter to the banker. Banker on its own will never give you overdraft facility. You have to request to the bank for the overdraft facility. You have to write a letter to the banker asking for the overdraft facility. Next comes is to issue the letter of credit. I told you that an importer in the foreign trade, importer always require a letter of credit to show his credit worthiness to the seller in the foreign country. So in that case, bank will have to write a, I mean the company will have to write a letter. If this company is an importing company, it's buying something from the foreign country, maybe it's buying machinery or maybe it's buying raw material or maybe it's buying something else from the foreign country. To show its credit worthiness to that foreign party, a bank should give a letter talking about the credit worthiness of this particular party. But for that, company will have to write a letter to that particular bank. Finally, company will also provide information about the, to provide information about the status of the customer. Many times, if the company wants to know the status of one customer, if the company wants to sell something to a particular customer, to a particular buyer, and the company wants to know what is the status of this particular customer in the market, whether this customer is a trustworthy customer, whether this customer is a credit worthy customer. For that, if the company wants to know about this particular customer, then company may ask uh, for that information from the banker. Company will have to write a letter. Okay, so these are the different circumstances where company will write letter to the banker. I mean the company secretary will write a letter to the banker for the different requests for getting the information for stop uh, payment of the check and all these things. So this is about the secretarial correspondence with the banks and secretary make correspondence with the bank in the different circumstances. So I have come to the end of this chapter that is a secretarial correspondence with the banks where we have learned about the banks in detail, what banks do, what is the role of the bankers, what are the latest developments in the banks. What is the care precautions should be taken by the company secretary to make correspondence with the bankers? And what are the precautions where company secretary write letters to the bankers? So we have learned everything in detail about the role of the secretary when it comes to the banks and about the banks in detail. So we have reached to the last part of this lesson that is secretarial correspondence with the banks. You have learned 
in detail about the banking sector, about the accounts, about the uh, deposits, about the different types of the banks and in detail about the banking sector. So, this is what about the secretarial correspondence with the banks end of this chapter and thanks. Prudent Scholars Powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस